Students, welcome to lecture 23 in biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics. As you we were discussing about uh, variations in pharmacokinetics in various disease states. So, in continuation to that, today's lecture is impact of hepatic impairment on pharmacokinetics. As we discussed, impact of uh, renal impairment on pharmacokinetics in our previous lecture. So in today's lecture, uh, we will discuss about uh, liver and uh, its impact on metabolism. Then uh, we will discuss about the impact of uh, various liver diseases, um, pharmacokinet their pharmacokinetic considerations, uh, how they could possibly impact the pharmacokinetics, and uh, possible influences of uh, hepatic diseases on pharmacokinetics. Then along with that, in the last, we will also discuss some other diseases and their possible impact on absorption, like uh, Parkinson's disease, Crohn's disease, celiac disease. So we will be discussing certain diseases and their possible impacts on absorption um, as uh, along with the renal and uh, hepatic impairment. These diseases are also important and they have significant impact on pharmacokinetics, particularly absorption. So in order to understand that how could liver uh, affect uh, pharmacokinetics, it is very important to understand that what is role of liver uh, within our bodies. And uh, uh, if you look uh, its major function, liver has a, a greater impact on metabolism. And uh, liver is a major metabolizing organ and storage place for enzymes located in cellular membranes in different parts of the liver. Um, liver is also called a detoxification uh, factory within the body. Uh, it is uh, used as uh, it is um, the major organ which is involved in uh, cleansing and detoxification in, within our body. If liver is not functioning properly, uh, the first its first very first impact on the body would be that detoxification would not occur in, on its normal pace and. Uh, uh, our body will suffer because of uh, various toxins which are present in our body. And apart from that, then um, uh, it is also important to understand that how the liver does that. Liver actually has so many enzymes which are uh, present in the liver as liver is the major storage place for such enzymes. And uh, these enzymes uh, are playing very important par part in the metabolism. And metabolism, as you know, is uh, not only uh, converting the drugs into their active states, but it also converts the drugs into their inactive states, which are also called metabolites. And metabolites are more water soluble. Uh, they are easily eliminated uh, from the body because of their solubility in the water. So if uh, the metabolites are being formed, then it means it is the guarantee that drug has uh, this um, chance to get released from the body in its metabolized form. Otherwise, if its metabolism is not ha happening properly, then definitely it is um, present in the body for a prolonged period of time and so toxic effects might be experienced. Drugs and metabolites may also be excreted by bili biliary excretion. So it is not only that drug is playing, uh, liver is playing the metabolism uh, process and uh, uh, then those metabolites are being executed by the eliminated by the kidneys. But uh, liver is directly involved in the excretion process as well in the form of biliary excretion, which we previously discussed uh, that what is biliary excretion so or secretion process. So many metabolites which are formed by the liver, uh, especially the glucuronide complexes and the conjugate, uh, conjugation reaction complexes, uh, which are also called conjugates, those are excreted by biliary secretion. And um, so liver in this way has very important role uh, within the body. So let's see what are the possible ways uh, in which hepatic diseases could impact body and pharmacokinetics of drugs. So hepatic diseases may lead to drug levels accumulation. So as we just discussed that uh, 
drugs uh, are being metabolized by drug, by the liver and uh, unaware of the fact that if the patient is suffering from liver diseases if he or she is being administered with uh, uh, the doses of any drug any particular drug continuously uh, what would happen that uh, the drug is definitely not being converted into its metabolites and it is present in its active form so uh, drug levels would be accumulated within the body uh, reaching up to the toxic levels then the next impact is disturbance in preparation of active or inactive metabolized so uh, as i be mentioned before that liver is not only involved in preparation of metabolites but it also uh, plays a very important role in conversion of non active uh, drug to active metabolite to their active forms like example is of a pro drug conversion into its active metabolite so if if for example the active metabolite is not being formed what could be the possible impact is that um, there would be uh, no pharmacological desired pharmacological response being produced no therapeutic desirable response being produced as the drug is not uh, converting to its uh, active form at first place then after oral administration uh, bioavailability may be increased uh, so um, this could be the reason because of the possibility of uh, avoiding first of all the first pass effect uh, which won't be happening in case of hepatic diseases and um, secondly as uh, we discussed that uh, there is lesser metabolism chances are there that normal metabolism Uh, would be affected and there would be lesser metabolism so the overall the bioavailability that is overall the proportion of the drug reaching into the blood circulation and and at the site of action would be increased alteration in drug protein binding as uh, liver is playing important role in the manufacturing of proteins uh, along with the kidneys uh, so if uh, liver is affecting so drug proteins are not uh, which are especially the binding proteins are not being produced in their normal quantity or quality so it would uh, lead to uh, lesser protein binding and so again the level of the drug free drug available will be increased kidney function would be affected as we discussed in our previous lecture that all the vital organs are interconnected if one organ uh, gets affected the other would be affected automatically especially kidney and liver uh, it is especially to true for the kidney and liver if kidney gets affected it it has a direct impact on the liver and if liver gets impacted it is it directly impacts kidneys um their creatinine clearance test is a good tool for measuring of kidney function and clearance there is no specific tool to measure hepatic functioning in case of hepatic impairment because of its complex enzymatic system most liver function tests indicate only the liver and uh, has been damaged they do not assess the function of the cytochrome p450 enzymes or intrinsic clearance by the liver so um, what we understand by this fact is that uh, um, although in case of uh, renal impairment we have we got a test a very clear indicative uh, indicative test which is called creatinine clearance test and that uh, uh, clearly indicates that uh, kidneys are whether the kidneys are functioning properly or not so actually this test is like the measurement for the functioning of the kidneys unfortunately there is no such test available for for the measurement of uh, hepatic function because hepatic uh, function is extremely complicated there are so many enzymes involved in case of liver and um, it is hard to measure that whether um, liver is only damaged or along with that it it is not functioning properly as well uh, it's made as we know that its main functioning or its major functioning is uh, metabolism so uh, it is very difficult to measure by various tests most of the tests which are available in the market only tell about the damage which has been done to the liver because of any disease or any uh, intoxication process but it doesn't show uh, whether the, it's um, any special metabolizing function is affected or not so uh, if for example the hepatic impairment case is revealed so 
uh, it is it would be a wise step to look for um, adjustment in the dose because of the possible impact on the pharmacokinetics especially because of uh, the its uh, particular impact on the metabolism pharmacokinetic considerations liver disease um, influence synthesis of albumin globulins and other systemically circulating plasma proteins so uh, because of this it affects drug plasma protein binding of course if it is uh, affecting the preparation of various proteins so um, and uh, as the major organ involved in their synthesis so definitely it has an impact on protein binding it has a very clear and direct impact on protein binding that would be reduced then distribution as we know that protein binding and distribution are directly connected to each other if protein binding is increased distribution is decreased for the drug because the free amount of drug or the free fraction of the drug is reduced uh, which is available for various functioning though it is it varies from case to case there are certain drugs which are highly lipophilic and highly protein bound as well so they still got a, a sufficiently high rate um, for volume their distribution and they got a higher volume of distribution but uh, um, in general uh, if we don't um, specify or we don't talk, talk about a certain case in general what will happen that if a drug is uh, highly protein bound the free fraction would be reduced and its distribution would be affected but if it is a lesser protein bound because of any reason because of lesser proteins available um, then unbound free fraction will be increased and its distribution chances will be increased so liver diseases have the capacity to influence the metabolism and so biliary excretion and elimination of uh, metabolites as well however liver functioning in this regard is hard to measure only the extent of damage to the liver can be estimated as we discussed already um, that uh, liver functioning uh, uh, is uh, very difficult to measure um, contrary to the renal impairment in which uh, the creatinine clearance uh, test, test is uh, doing best of its job and it is very helpful in understanding the function of kidneys along with the damage to, which is, has been done to the kidneys or in case of this hepatic impairment you can only know about the damage which has been done to the liver because of anything but uh, apart from that you cannot understand uh, whether how much impact on the metabolism had happened um, so until unless you keep the patient under the observation in clinical situations and uh, you do the dose adjustment so um, definitely liver has a particular impact on metabolism as well so if we look at the pharmacokinetic considerations liver is impacting protein binding distribution and metabolism so if we just simplify and we see the possible influences of liver diseases on pharmacokinetics so it could be this way nature and severity of liver diseases these could vary one disease could be more severe than the other their nature could be totally different so this would be affecting differently the extent to which pharmacokinetics may be affected then drugs elimination drugs eliminated less than 20 percent are less likely to be affected by liver diseases as we have discussed that uh, liver is playing important role in metabolism but uh, um, it is also a fact that there are not uh, too many drugs uh, all the drugs are not necessarily being metabolized by the liver but uh, many drugs uh, are excreted excretion means that they are being ex uh, eliminated from the body in their intact form they don't need metabolism they simply get eliminated from the body and if the kidneys are functioning properly um, then or the kidneys are in their optimum state then uh, in that situation hepatic impairment won't be a problem for such drugs to get eliminated because their metabolism is even less than 20 percent then due to administration oral bioavailability of drugs more subjected to first pass effect may be increased so um, root of administration in case of root of administration if we talk about the oral administration those would be affected more uh, 
particularly for the drugs which are extensively metabolized by the first pass effect by the liver so if liver is affecting because of any disease and its functioning has been affected definitely the metabolism metabolic rate would be affected and uh, the drugs uh, those drugs which um, uh, in normal circumstances were extensively being metabolized by the liver would be lesser metabolized and so their bioavailability will be increased uh, then protein binding so drug protein binding of drugs may be altered um, there could be a possibility that uh, the proteins would be reduced but uh, there are situation that proteins uh, manufacturing or synthesis is increased abnormally uh, for certain proteins it is true so uh, overall we can say that protein binding function would be altered uh, how it is it would be altered that totally depends upon the um, circumstances and varies case to face, case to case means for one disease it could be true while for the other other diseases could not be true so that totally depends upon the circumstances impact of uh, disease states on uh, absorption so now we are discussing about in general uh, about other diseases uh, apart from renal and uh, hepatic impairment uh, as i mentioned in the start of the lecture that we will uh, touch upon certain diseases other diseases as well um, but uh, there are too many diseases which could impact the pharmacokinetics and it is difficult to comprehend and uh, um, accumulate all the diseases impact in 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 a limited time and uh, a narrow frame of our uh, course contents uh, but in general any disease state which impacts uh, certain uh, factors within the body has the ability to impact the absorption and overall pharmacokinetics as well what are those factors um, drug absorption may be affected by any disease that causes changes in so we are uh, here we are not talking particularly about any particular disease but any disease which can cause uh, any one among the following changes and the changes are for example the drug could change the intestinal blood flow like it could happen in case of congestive heart failure this that, that is a disease in which uh, uh, usually heart fa is failed to pump the blood in its required quantities so which is required by the body so definitely the blood flow towards the intestine would be affected and um, so it is standard blood flow would be affected there are chances that during uh, uh, the episode of congestive heart failure there would be a, an hindrance in the intestinal blood flow so it definitely impacts uh, pharmacokinetics along with and particularly absorption uh, then uh, gastrointestinal motility changes in stomach emptying time uh, if any disease changes uh, causes the changes in the stomach emptying time like um, the examples are of constipation and diarrhea both the conditions are the one which are in a contradictory manner affecting the stomach emptying time it is increasing in the case of diarrhea while it is decreasing in the uh, it is sorry it is decreasing in the case of diarrhea while in the case of constipation it is increasing stomach emptying time is increasing then gastric ph uh, that affects the drug solubility intestinal pH that affects the extent of ionization so these are the various conditions which can impact the absorption and so pharmacokinetics uh, digestive enzyme secretions if uh, digestive enzyme secretion is uh, inhibited or decreased because of any diseased condition uh, that could that would be definitely impacting absorption and overall pharmacokinetics of drugs so um in case of other diseases uh, i have chosen a few diseases particularly um which have very um drastic impact on the absorption so first disease is parkinson's disease so patients of parkinson's disease may have difficulty swallowing and greatly diminished gastrointestinal motility as you know that parkinson's disease is a certain disease in which there is an imbalance within the in the neurotransmitter within the bell, uh, mind uh, brain uh, acetylcholine level is increased and um, uh, usually the difficulty in swallowing and greatly diminished gastrointestinal motility are the after uh, effects of increased acetylcholine levels um, acetylcholine as you know that has this uh, 
capacity to um, especially the uh, internal smooth muscles constriction of smooth muscles so basically difficulty in swallowing is esophageal constriction or uh, greatly diminished gastrointestinal motility is also because of too much constriction of the smooth muscles of the gastrointestinal walls so um, overall parkinson's disease could be impacting the absorption of drugs and uh, patients being administered with uh, uh, tricyclic antidepressants like amipramine amitriptyline nortriptyline and antipsychotic drugs like phenothiazines for prolonged period of time may have reduced gastrointestinal motility or even intestinal obstructions so uh, though it is not the part of parkinson's disease but i mentioned it here because um, this is also a special case uh, patients those patients who are using tricyclic antidepressants uh, and you know that antipsychotics and antidepressants are the drugs which are uh, uh, supposed to be administered or, or supposed to take by the to be taken by the patient for sufficiently prolonged period of time before it starts to produce any effect uh, like antidepressants are supposed to take at least for one month before it, it starts to produce its antidepressant action and same is true for antipsychotic drugs so uh, these are the drugs which are associated with prolonged use and uh, but then uh, prolonged use becomes a real problem when they are anticholinergic effect which they produce that results in pro, uh, reduced gastrointestinal motility or even intestinal obstruction that re results in severe cases of constipation and and uh, uh, very painful condition for the patient sometime and uh, so overall it also affects absorption of drugs Um, then there is another disease which is Crohn's disease. This is um, a disease particularly associated with gastrointestinal tract. Uh, so Crohn's disease is an inflammatory disease of the distal, uh, small intestine and colon. Now what kind of inflammation either because of some infection or not? No. It, these are basically autoimmune diseases which um, happen on um, their selves like uh, no um, the influence is required. Sometimes the body's uh, start autoimmune response and um, Crohn's disease is one of the manifestations. So um, it particularly influences the distal small intestine and colon. So important manifestations of this disease are regions of thickening of the large intestine and overgrowth of uh, anaerobic bacteria and yes it also influences the blood flow towards these regions which are thickened. Now as these regions are thickened so definitely the blood supply which will be initially increased because of the inflammation process will be decreased because of the thickened surface area. Uh, so uh, it uh, produces erratic response definitely uh, you in such situations you would be expecting erratic response as I just mentioned that initially because of inflammation as it, it is inflammatory this disease so initially what will happen that there would be uh, increased blood supply towards these particular regions small intestine distal small intestine and colon but later on um, at the later time periods of this disease when regions uh, of the large intestine have gotten uh, thickened so now there would be a problem in blood supply so erratic response would be experienced however overall absorption is reduced because of reduced surface area and thicker gut wall for diffusion okay so another uh, similar disease is uh, celiac disease and uh, uh, basically celiac disease is a disease in which inflammation of the proximal small intestine occurs and um, as we have discussed in Crohn's disease the distal small intestine and colon gets affected in this case what happens that proximal small intestine is affected it is also inflammatory disease but here the condition or the reason is well known uh, its main cause is sensitization to gluten protein a viscous protein found in cereals like in wheat and uh, patients with celiac disease generally have an increased rate of stomach emptying and increased permeability of the small intestine uh, this condition um, resembles very closely to diarrhea but uh, um, apart from diarrhea or the increased gastrointestinal movement uh, this is particularly associated with inflammation as well and this inflammation doesn't lead to thickening of the walls or anything like that that happened in case of Crohn's disease but here what happens that overall the blood flow is increased 
so um in here in this case in the case of celiac disease it is easy to, uh, to interpret the impact of this disease on the pharmacokinetics or absorption it would uh, will, it would result in increased rate of stomach emptying and increased permeability of the small intestine so overall again the uh, absorption of the drugs would be reduced So students, this was end of this chapter and uh, in next uh, we are going to start a new chapter and uh, only chapter left is intravenous infusions. So we will continue intravenous infusions from upcoming lectures.